Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. This video is going to cover Octane 2023's updated compositing system. Essentially, you take what are called um, render AOVs and then you composite them together what are called output AOVs. So we'll get into the termination la uh, terminology later. I think it's kind of bad. But uh, essentially, uh, render AOVs are passes and output AOVs can be thought of as compositions like an After Effects composition or a Photoshop document, basically a layered um, uh, node that allows you to, to do some compositing and some, and some color correction work all in real time. And when I mean real time, I don't mean you're um, calculating the effects, you know, sort of, of pre-rendered uh, passes in real time. I mean, everything's happening in real time. So typically you would render out your passes to disk and then bring in those passes into a compositing program like um, After Effects or Nuke or even Photoshop, layer them together and then do your color corrections and whatever else you're gonna do. Um, and Octane, it all happens simultaneously in memory. So you don't actually save out your passes to disk. You have your passes held in memory and you can composite those together in memory. Now, um, I think this is the future of working and I think it's really exciting, but it's, it's a little hard to wrap your head around at first. And I had done a, a previous video, but this, there's been enough improvements in, in Octane 2023 that we could do this again. I'm going to make all the, um, the scene available on the Pixel Fondue Discord. The link of that will be in the description. And uh, yeah, so let's just kind of like pick apart this finished scene and then we'll rebuild it from scratch. So I've got this tiger beetle here. It's a scanned image or scanned mesh. This is from um, Sketchfab and I'll, uh, the attribution to the author is in the description. And it's a good subject for this. I've got three area lights in the scene here, sort of a, a key and a fill and a, a rear here. So here's the fill, here's the rear, here's the, here's the key, and here's my camera, right? And I also have an HDR wrapped around the scene providing light as well. Now you can see in this shot right here, this beauty shot, that it's a little blown out, but that's okay because we're gonna be doing some light mixing um, with the render AOVs. So let's take a look at just our outputs right here. In fact, let me go to a schematic. And again, let's talk a little bit about, let me just go to the right one here, light mixer. Difference between render AOVs, which you find right here, there's a whole bunch of them here. These are passes. It's just the best thing to call them. They're passes, they're render passes. Uh, and AOV stands for arbitrary output variable. I think it's an old render man term. Um, at least I think it origi originated with RenderMan. It's just, it's a little too geeky. They're, they're just different uh, passes. And we'll talk about the passes that are available to us in a moment. And there's just, like I said, there's a whole bunch of them available to us, right? Whether they're info passes like Z-Depth or like passes of just the reflections in the scene or just the shadows in the scene or just mats of specific items or materials, you know, those are all passes. And then the, what they call um, right here, output AOVs, I tend to think of these as compositions. And so here we've got our, our, our render AOVs here. We've got about seven of them. And so we'll go through these in a second. And then here we've got our output AOVs. I've got three of them. And these are the different sort of layered compositions here, right? So we have three sort of, think of it again as an After Effects composition that has its own layers. So each of these output AOVs has its own node with multiple layers. And in those layers, you can have both rendered passes, you can have white mixing effects, you can have color corrections, like corrections to gamma or exposure or hue or value or saturation. You can do sharpening, you can do camera post effects like bloom or glare. It's really pretty cool. And you can kind of see where this is going. And again, they're all happening in real time. And what I mean is, um, we have these passes here, right? So we've got different AOVs for the lights, and we have a, a Z-Depth AOV, and we have a couple custom ones here. So if I look at these here in this little drop down, this light ID AOV, this is just the key light. That's all the light contribution from the key light, just the key light, nothing else. And we were separating out our lights. This is the fill light from the other side, and the next one is the top light or rear light from the top. Um, we were doing these separately so we can mix them back later and change the intensities, change the colors. And here we've got the ambient light. This is just the HDR. That's just the straight HDR. And we've got a custom AOV. We've got the beetle. We've got another mat here. This is the wooden, um, if I look back at here, this is just this material. So we can have custom AOVs or a custom mat of any object or group of objects or any material in the scene as well. And we also have a, an info AOV, uh, the Z-Depth. We can have info like 
normal direction or um, position or uh, material ID, all kinds of info passes, wireframe, ambient occlusion. Uh, we also have uh, okay, so those are all our those are all our render passes or render AOVs. We'll just call again render passes. And then let's take a look at these three output AOVs. Each one of these is a composition. Think of it as a composition. So they all include various light mixes with various um, effects like saturation or exposure or gamma. So we've got this one right here. So again, this is our render, kind of blown out. And this is some compositing being done on it, okay? So fairly, you know, somewhat similar, but it's a little bit different. This one's sort of radically different, right? It's very different lighting. And then we've got um, this one, which is a lot different. There's some color correction going on here as well, as you can see. So we've got some different, let me just go to some different camera angles. And again, like I said, this is all happening in real time. So, you know, when I'm going to this close up, you can see it's, it's got a, you know, a thousand or 10,000 different passes or 10,000 samples. So it's only on, you know, 200 samples just starting to go through and, and iterate through this render, but everything's available. Right, everything's available to me. So if I change the camera angle, all of these composites are happening at the same time the render is happening. So I get the main beauty render happening here. And at the same time, all of these passes or render AOVs are happening. The lights, they're all rendering. You know, we're only really like, you know, a fifth of the way through this, or 5% of the way through this. You know, 10,000 samples, by the way, is way too many for this, but, um, and then it's taking all of these different render AOVs and compositing them and doing light mixing on them via all of these nodes I have here, you know, these three different three different output AOVs or compositions um, in real time. So it, it's it's extremely and again I can adjust this in real time. So here I'm looking at this uh, beetle from the back. Let me just look at it maybe a different. Let's look at it from. This angle again, and maybe we'll get something not so crazy. So, like, if I'm looking at this one, I, I want that back light to put a lot more, um, uh, a lot higher intensity on the top part of the beetle here. I can go to AOV one, and I can go to my light mixer here, and I can find um, my rear light, which is light number three. Let me just sort of scooch everything over, and I can say bump this up. So when I change this from 50% to like 200%, you're gonna see a lot more light on the top here. Like that, see, and that's just all happening in real time. I can even tint that light if I want to to something else. We'll make it maybe kind of green or kind of bluish or kind of purple or kind of red, right? You can see what we're doing. And this is just all, it's, it's still rendering. It's only 2,000 or 10,000 samples done. But it's, we're doing the compositing in real time. I don't have to wait till this is done, save them all to disk, load them into Photoshop, start layering them up. It's just all interactive. And this is just a much better way to work, right? I can change my camera angle. I can change my textures. I can repose my model. All of these passes and all these composites are happening at the same time. You can see how powerful this is. You can see as GPUs get more powerful, uh, this is, you know, obviously I've got a 4090 in this system, but he, you know, even much less powerful GPUs will be doing this in real time. Um, you can just kind of see where this is going and why this is so exciting. So let's just, you know, uh, start with this scene with none of this set up and I'll show you how to set it up. Okay, so and this is a scene with all the nodes stripped out. We're just gonna start over from scratch. The first thing I like to do is create a new um, a, a schematic workspace. And so I'll come over here, this upper left button, just click that and we'll just type in composites or something, you know, something like that. And we'll just double click composites and go in here. And then we need a couple of channels from the render item to get started. So you just go over to the channels right here and you um, pop up with this little guy right here, this uh, little filter and you type in Octane and you just drag in the AOV output and the render AOV one. So you can just drag them both in like this. So we've got AOV output group and render AOV group. Those are just the two main channels that we're gonna be plugging everything into. The first thing we're gonna do is the render AOV group. And again, remember these are passes. So render AOV passes, output AOV composites is the best roof analog. I can come up with that. So let's go over here and we've got our whole render AOV uh, pop up in our Octane uh, nodes uh, panel here. So we'll click that and there's just like a bunch, right? So I'm actually gonna um, 
collapse a couple of these just so we can get them all on screen and kind of see them here. And the first thing we need is a render AOV group. We'll click that and we've got a group and this is where we start connecting them in. So again, Octane, it's just, everything's just abstracted into node after node after node, right? It's a little bit annoying. I think this would um, work a lot better on the shader tree. And maybe I'll talk a little bit about that at the end. But, you know, in Octane, if there's any way they could make two nodes out of one, they always do. So we've got our um, render AOV group here. And into this group, we can plug in our passes, right? And if we want another one right now, we have four uh, inputs. We can just do add input. Now we have five, right? Add another, we got six. Add another, we got seven. You get it. Okay, so in the first one, we're just going to add, add our white inputs first. So the first thing I need to do before I add any of these, I'm going to go over to my lights and select my area, key area light. And it's this guy right here, right? And I'm going to go over here to the properties and just sort of drag down a little bit. And under Octane Light, we want to give it a light ID pass, right? So this is, it defaults to one. We'll just keep that one. So our key light is light ID one. This here is our fill light. We'll call it light ID two. And by the way, multiple lights can have the same um, pass. That just means their contribution will be combined into, into one pass. But we want each of these in a separate pass. We can mix them later, right? So our rear light or back light here, rim light, we'll call three, just like that. And we just pop back over to the schematic and select AOV one. And I'm going to click on white AOV down here at the bottom like that. And you'll see that pops in and it just defaults to light ID one. So that's going to appear down here in our dropdown. Now we got beauty, denoise beauty, and light ID one. That's just that key light. So if I select our, our um, light ID uh, AOV or pass and control D to duplicate and then change this to two, now that's going to be our um, uh, uh, fill light, right? So I go over to the fill number two, there's our fill light on this side of him. Again, let's do one more for the top light or rear light. Change that to three. Plug it into number three. Let's check it out down here. There's our top. Okay, so we're making some progress. Now let's just get the ambient light or the HDR. So I'm gonna select four here and on our render AOVs, I'm gonna click on light AOV again. And here, instead of having a light ID, I'm gonna just pick ambient light. Okay, you could also do day, sunlight if you're doing a daylight environment. Let's just do ambient light, which is our HDR or a textured environment. And there it is, so you know. It's pretty good HDR, looks pretty good, but we've got these other lights, you know, the top and the fill and the key that we're going to mix in with it. So let's just keep adding a few more. Um, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select the beetle and I'm going to select the pin, okay? And then I'm just going to run back to the schematic here. And, and both of these guys on the Octane tab, just like the lights, I can give these guys an ID as well. So these guys are going to have a a custom AOV ID of one. In fact, let's just do, um, let's just take the pin off that for now. So if I come over here and look, I don't have that hooked up yet, right? So I need to put it in our um, list here. So AOV five, we're gonna do new, uh, whoops, we're gonna do a new render AOV and I need a custom AOV right here, custom AOV. And then that's custom AOV one. And then if we can look at it here now, there's our beetle. Now, if we want to add the pin to that, I select the pin and again on the Octane tab, change the custom AOV to one and the pin will just be in there as well. So you can combine items, you know, different meshes into the same pass. And it's just a mat we can use later on. So if I just want to color correct just this beetle or composite something on top of it, I can use this mat to isolate it from the background or from the other objects in the scene. You know, let's do also let's also do one of these for um, materials. And so I think I had done uh, the wooden material, but why don't I do the pin material? We'll do the um, pin head material. So we'll just click that override there, and here's the material. And again, these have a custom AOV dropdown just like the meshes. So I can say custom AOV two, and that's just the the top of the pin right there. And if I look at it, go come back here to my um, composites tab here. I'm going to take this custom AOV, control D, duplicate it. I'm going to change it to two for our pin top, plug it in. We take a peek at it over here. 
It's just that little top there. So I think it's it's yellow right now, but if I want to, I'll change it to red or something just to show you how you can do some selective color corrections. And let's do one more. Let's do an output AOV. Let's do two more. Let's just do, um, for AOV 7, let's do a Z depth. So again, we want a custom render AOV here, and we'll use uh, the info passes. And way down here at the bottom is Z depth. So let's select that. Whoops depth and then we'll do one more i'll make some adjustments on that in a second let's click uh, number eight and let's do ambient occlusion okay noise beauty like this there's no alpha channel here what you see here is just the hdr uh, behind and just visible in the scene um, let me go back to z depth just so you get something that's kind of important here so we have z depth on and there's no alpha channel in this scene if the if i leave the environment z depth like 1000 which it defaults to you can see how it's all crunchy around the legs where um, the depth of field is sort of blending into the background. You need to like get these things um, the same amount, otherwise you get that really weird crunchiness that's not really correct depth. So you want your environment depth the same as your maximum Z depth. Okay, so we got Z depth, we got um, uh, anyway occlusion, we've got a mat for the top of the pen, we've got a mat for the bug in the pen, We've got um, the ambient light, then we've got three different light passes here. Okay, so we've got our passes set up. So these are just rendering, right? And now we're gonna set up our composites or our output AOVs as Octane calls them. So um, let's look at our render node here. We've got our, again, these are our, our passes right here. And here we've got our um, AOV output group, right? And so similar to the render AOV group where we need this node that has like a, a stack of layers there, we need the same thing for the AOV output group. So new AOV output group, click that, and then click output AOV group. I know it just, it sounds like it's like you're seeing it, hearing the same words over and over. You select AOV output group, and then you click the node AOV output group, and then you add output, you know, groups to this. It, it's, it's like, it's a little confusing. Um, but essentially, you're just getting your base stack down. These are our composites. So we think of it as a, a composition, right? So a composition in After Effects is its is it its own entity, and inside that composition is multiple layers, and you can have multiple compositions, right? You can even have compositions within compositions. You could do all the same thing here. And so we just have two of these here. So think of these as two compositions, and we need to add in our layers into these compositions. So let's select the first composition, and we go over here to New Output AOV, and we need, um, instead of having the output AOV group, now the one that, again, if you highlight the, if you if you select the channel, it's only gonna um, highlight or make um, clickable the ones that'll actually connect to it. So if I don't have anything connected here, and I come over to here to new output AOV, everything is clickable. That's because I don't have any channel selected. It's easier to select the channel and then select um, um, the node that's going to connect to it, it'll, it'll let you know if it'll actually work. So we need the output AOV connected to the output AOV group. So again, here's our com composition, and here's all the layers in the composition. And we can have additional layers. It starts with two, but we can add more. So we have four layers now, right? So let's start adding some um, a light mixing to layer one. So the light mixing node is kind of a big, ugly node. and uh, but it's good to have on the base because we just sort of, again, I'm just going to kind of rearrange these, put our passes down here, and let's focus on our um, composite now. So again, the base layer, I like to put down the white mixing. So we get our basic mix down, and then we can, on top of that, start adding things like um, post-processing post -processing effects like blooms, and then color corrections, and um, any, any matting and, and, and additional compositing we're going to do. So first let's do light mixing. So we're gonna do a new output AOV and we're gonna click on light mixer right here. Boom. Now, like I said, it makes this sort of big, ugly node here with all these other nodes. And this sort of annoys me because here we've got, you know, it just starts with two layers and then it just, you can, if you wanna add more, you can just come over here and, and you know, add additional ones. For whatever reason, the light mix node, <laughs> it's like, it defaults to 20 lights, like, uh, you know, like generally you don't have 20 lights and it just results in this big huge massive unwieldy node it should start with like three and if you want to add more you can add more so just that's just like a bug uh little bug report there but 
Anyway, each of these um, nodes needs to, each of these lights need to be enabled, and then it needs, uh, then you can adjust the intensity and the color tint. So if I go down here to AOV1, so we can now look at this, now we can look at all of these passes here that we set up, and then we can also start to look at these AOVs that have connections. So here's all our passes. At the very bottom, we have this AOV right here. Now it's all black because we have our light mixer group, but we don't have any lights active. So let's activate um, light ID 1. So there's our key light. Let's activate 2. There's our fill light. Let's activate 3. There's our top light. And let's activate um, the ambient light. There's our HDR. So now this should look basically like our beauty, and it does, just like it. We haven't made any changes yet. But now let's go ahead and make some changes. So let's take our ambient light multiplier, which is the HDR, and bring it down. We just wanna use it as sort of a fill light. So we're just gonna bring it down to like 15%. Okay, so we'll worry about that background later. And then let's bring up the key light to maybe 200%. So we get more light coming in from the side. In fact, maybe even like 400% coming in from this side. And then we'll bump up the um, light from the top to like 200, so we get more of a hot light up top, maybe 150. And those adjust the colors, maybe some blue coming in from the side or from our from our key light. In fact, let's turn our key light down. Well, that's like way too hot. So we don't want to blow out our white sort of cotton down there. This beetle is is um, pretty metallic, so there's um there's a metallic. Uh, shader on it, so it has like a PBR, like a, so, you know, so it's not entirely metallic, but it's quite a bit metallic there, so it's very reflective. It doesn't pick up that really hot diffuse light. Um, anyway, so let's let's maybe bring this down just just a little bit. We can again we can adjust the exposure and stuff um, later, and then yeah, let's let's take our, our our key light, and so light ID one, that's our key light. Let's change the tint to more of a sort of a, like a bluish, like that. And then let's go over to um, the fill, which is light ID 2, and kind of go to the opposite side, and make it a little bit yellow, as you can see the yellow here, right? In fact, the top, I'm gonna, light ID 3, I'm gonna make a little, little yellowish as well. Okay, something like that. All right, so we've got some light mixing and some tinting, we've changed our colors a little bit. Let's like move on. now. What's cool about this is, like I said, on layer two, let's go over here to, to new um, output AOV. We can add an image file, so a pre-rendered image, and composite that on. We can do a layer group, which is sort of like um, pre-compositing. And so we can, we can take a, instead of just adding a single layer on it, we can add a layer group, which has its own set of layers. Okay, and so we may do something like that in a minute. And, but we can also do things like um, adjust the effects. We can adjust the brightness or the saturation or the white balance. And so all of our sort of uh, layer effects, you would call them in like um, Photoshop, are available to us here as well. So I can, if I add like a layer effect, like adjust saturation and plug it into number two here, layer number two, this is going to affect everything underneath it, just like it would in Photoshop, right? Just like a like a adjustment layer in Photoshop. So I turn saturation to zero, my, my, whoops, my bug is gonna go black and white. And then I can say number, layer number three, and I could add something like a contrast, and so adjust contrast, and then maybe up that like that and get sort of like an interesting like sort of black and white photo look. Um, that's just an example, right? So let's just right now, let's just do something like, so let's just bump up the saturation a little bit. So I'm just gonna adjust the saturation. And again, this is just like working in Photoshop. We bump it up to like 150% here. You can see if I bump it way up, how saturated it's getting. So maybe like 133. It also has all of the um, camera response curves, which are kind of cool. So I can apply a camera response curve, just click that. And this is all sort of the film emulations that Octane shipped with a long time ago. So I can add these different film looks on here, right? Just, I'm just gonna pick something sort of randomly here. Maybe, maybe the Afka color, Vista 200 CD, something like that. Looks good, okay, cool. Um, and then we can also add something like 
camera effects. So I can add a sharpen or a blur or a glare. So or chromatic aberration, let's add that. Let's add a, uh, add a little chromatic aberration to the edges of the images here. So if I bump up chromatic aberration, you can see what it's doing here. And again, it's so cool. It's just happening in real time as the actual entire, you know, really rendering, you know, we're at 300 samples of this 2000 samples here. So the, you know, the beauty pass is still rendering, but we're over here in our output AOV adjusting our pretty late stage compositing at this point. So something like this is kind of cool maybe. And then maybe we'll do one more thing. Let's um, add another input here. Okay, so now let's take our Z depth pass and use it for as a mat to mat in black. So black will fill in the in the white layers and just sort of gradually fade off to the, the front part um, to sort of knock down this background here. So we need a solid color, and I need our um, to composite that in with the. Uh, with the uh, Z depth pass. And to, to do that, I need to use a layer group. So I'm gonna use a layer group to sort of pre-compose these. So in After Effects, it'd be like pre-composing layers, right? So let's add a layer group and sort of drag this over. I've got two layers here. I can add more if I want to, but the bottom layer, let's just do black. So let's just do new solid color, black. Okay, it starts with white, but we'll just make it black. And here you can see it's just it's just covering everything with black, right? So if I take our layer group and disable it, there's our bug, enable it, and it's just black. And you can see if I just if I take the black and plug it in here, not using the layer group, um, you know, it's doing the same thing. But the reason we're using a layer group is we want to 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 mat it out. So I, I need to use the layer group for, to enable to like mat it out. So I can mat it out. Let me just sort of pop pop this plug this back in here now on input two here i'm going to come over here and use mask with layer group so i'm going to click that and then for the layer one source let's actually start so the z depth let's start with our um custom aov1 just to show you how this works this is sort of like makes sense there's a black and white mat right so my layer one is going to be, again, a render AOV. And then I'm gonna pick that render AOV. I'm going to pick AOV, custom AOV one. Now it's asking me, what is the source for the alpha channel? What is the source for this mat? Well, it doesn't, not what, is the, not, not what is the source for the alpha channel, but what is the source for the mat? This doesn't have an alpha channel. It's just a black and white um, pass right here. So the, we're gonna, for the source, we're gonna pick luminance, right? And you can see it's just taking that bug. In fact, let me just disable our um, chromatic aberration for a moment. <laughs> it's taking that bug and it's just matting the black on top of it. But instead of using uh, um, the bug mat, let's use the Z depth as a mat. So I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna change my uh, my source instead of just custom AOV1, let's go to info Z depth. Right there. And what that did is it knocked out the, the just you know the back. If I look at my Z depth here, the back is white, so it's getting all that black and it's sort of fading off as it gets closer to the camera. So it gives us this effect, which is kind of cool, which is what we're looking for. And you can adjust the opacity on here as well. Right, let's just go full black. And then with our chromatic aberration, let's actually plug it in on top here and turn it back on. There we go. So there's, you know, composite one, right? We've got some, uh, you know, we've got some, we adjusted the saturation, we did some light mixing, we adjusted the saturation, we adjusted the camera response curves, we um, composited in another render pass, the uh, a black, color using the Z depth render pass as a mat. And then, which is, this is really the only sort of complicated part where we had to do a, a layer group with the black on the bottom and a octane mask with layer group on layer two. It just think of it like in, um, in, in After Effects, you have like, um, to use like a layer mask, you'd have you know your, your footage on one channel or one layer, then above it, you would have like a black and white image and you would 
use that luminance or alpha as the layer mask. If you're familiar with After Effects, that's basically what it's working working with here. Or in Moto, if you use the shader tree, it's like using a group, you know, like a layer mask in the shader tree. Except in the shader tree, you put it under the layer you want to mask, and, and here and After Effects, and you put it above it. So anyway, that's how that's working. But you know, so here's our yeah. Again, here's our beauty, and here's our composite, all in the same scene. So let's just do one more. Let's just sort of um, move all this stuff up. And I'll do that uh, sort of reddish one, sort of really crazy one. So AOV2, again, let's just start this over. Uh, you go to new output AOV. First thing we need is an output AOV to connect to our group there. And here we've got some layers on the very bottom layer. Let's just go to output AOV2 now, which is starting with, there's nothing hooked up yet. But the very bottom layer, I like to do a light mixer. So very bottom layer, let's do a light mixer. And then again, let's start turning on our lights that we want to use. Let's use um, ambient light and the key, the fill, and the top light. Let's turn ambient down to like um, 10%. Let's turn... Uh, Let's turn key down to like 20%. Let's turn fill down to 50%. Let's turn the top one to like 350%. So really hot on the top. And so let's make the top one, let's just adjust the tinting. So the tint for number three, which is our top light, we're gonna do red. Get that sort of really cool red look. Something like that. And then I'm actually going to bump those side lights up quite a bit. Let's do our um, key light, maybe like one, eh, maybe not that hot. Well, maybe like 120, but we'll make it kind of red as well. Kind of like that. And then our fill, whoops, that's the ambient light tint. We don't want the ambient light tint, we want the key tint. And then fill tint, we'll just do more sort of yellow, orange. Actually, maybe purpley looks better. You can really see it kind of down here, sort of purple, like that. I'm gonna do the same thing I did up here to sort of knock the background to black, but this time I'm just going to uh, select this group and click Control D, and it's gonna do the whole thing. And I'm just gonna drag it um, down here and connect it. Let me just sort of give myself some room. This is where I think this, all of these operations would just be way better off in the shader tree. Have a sort of uh, composite tree over here, shading, and then another tab called compositing, where instead of adding textures, we're just adding our, our passes, and we're adding in um, all of these different camera effects and color corrections and um, stuff like that, light mixing over in a separate tree, tree view, and where we have different you know, blend modes and opacities and things like that all built in. I just think it'd be way better than dealing with all these nodes over here. Um, but at any rate, so I'm just gonna duplicate this and plug it in here. So we just sort of knock that background back. And then let's add a couple more inputs here. Let's just add maybe two or three more inputs. And yeah, let's do something, I don't know. Let's, um, let's change the color of the, uh, of the, uh, pin right here. So again, these guys, and instead of plugging them directly into our AOV, I'm going to unplug them both, and I'm going to select layer one, and I'm going to do a group here. So again, I'm sort of pre-comping this. I'm going to just do a layer group. So again, it's a group within it, layers within layers. So I'm going to, again, I'm just going to put this in the bottom. So here's our white mixing. I'm gonna knock the background back to black. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a minute. So that's all in just this layer group, which is going into layer one. But I'm actually gonna go over to layer two here, and I'm gonna do another layer group. So new output AOV, layer group. 
And I'm going to plug this first group into the bottom of this one. So we're just getting the same thing, right? So if I unplug this here, we're just getting the exact same thing. Layer group and both of them. But I'm going to do a little bit of masking in the second layer group. I'm going to um, add an input. And in layer two, I'm going to adjust the hue. So I'm going to come over here. So new output AOV, let's do adjust hue. And let's just do something crazy like um, 180, just so you see a big difference. And then I'm going to mask that using that layer three. I'm going to mask it with the uh, mask with layer group. So click that. And then layer one for our mask is just going to be that output AOV of the output AOV two of the top of the pin. So it's going to be an, um, I'm sorry, a render AOV, a, a pass, right? The top the pass of the pin. So click that. And let's click um, custom AOV two like that. And again, we're going to be using um, the luminance. So not, it doesn't have an alpha channel. Its source should be the luminance of that AOV, of that pass. And there we go. See, now that's blue. So I can go over here and adjust uh, the hue, and I'm just adjusting it right here on the pin top. And I could do the same thing with a bug. So I can actually, um, if I want to, I can just take this group here that I just did for the pin top. Layer three, it's again, it's a new group. So new output AOV, we want a layer group. And we'll do the same thing. We're just gonna adjust the hue of the bug for, for fun. So again, um, the very bottom layer is our sort of pre-comp down here. So we're putting the bug on top again, layer one. And again, you see that it overwrote our, our pin. So I unplug it, you see our pin is blue. If I put this back into layer three, it's overwriting it, but that's okay. We're gonna we're gonna do another hue on number two here. Let me just add another input. So number two, let's do a new um, hue. And we're just gonna, let's just switch our bug around to like um, 90, like that. But now let's on, layer, let's on the layer three above it, let's add our masking group and just mask just the bug. So new app put AOV, we're gonna mask it with a layer group. And that layer one of that layer group is going to be um, the bug. So new output AOV, and we wanna use our render AOV. And that render AOV is going to be our custom AOV one, which is the bug. And remember, we wanna use the luminance. Boom. So now we're just changing the color of that bug right there. Oh, if you remember, we had the bug and the pin in the same thing. So let's go back to our pin and, um, and and remove it from that. So now it's just the bug and now we've got, we're changing the pin to blue and the bug to green. And again, you know, we can do things here like our, our mask. Right now we're just using that um, output AOV, custom AOV as the mask, but we can, we can, you know, adjust our mask if we want to. We can come over here and add an input. And let's say I want that mask to be blurred a little bit. I can go over here and I can add a blur to that um, bug AOV. Let's just add a blur and uh, let's blur it up. And you can see it's it's getting kind of, sort of crank it up here slowly. You see it's sort of blurring the edges here. So if I look at um, just the mask, you now I took that that bug mask, this guy, and I'm I'm blurring it with this second layer here. So you can color correct and blur your masks as well. It's just a full blown compositing tree, right? Which is pretty cool. So I can see a little bit of a blur there, and then I can you know maybe. Um, Maybe add one more layer here. Let's just uh, add an input. I'm going to move my mask to the top and in between the hue and uh, the mask, let's do like um, a bloom or something. So new app video AOV, let's do a camera effect, like a lens flare or a glare or a, a bloom. Let's do a bloom like this. Let's see if we can get our bug to bloom up a little bit. So I'm going to bug to bloom a little bit. This is, I'm just messing around at this point, but, and then we can um, 
at the very top of our um, AOV, what's on number four, let's just do like a vignette. In fact, let's go back to this guy. And well, let's we can go to this guy. This is that's fine. We can do just like a vignette on top. So the very last thing I'll do is just a little bit of a vignette. So new um, output or uh, output AOV, let's just do a channel effects plus processing. We'll do a vignette and we'll just, um, not going to notice it so much because it's very black, but you can kind of see what I'm doing here. And then if you if I disable it, enable it, it's just to sort of run the edges. But you can kind of see where I'm going. So these are you know pretty far afield uh, from where we started. Um, but you see where I'm going with this is you've got all of these basically all of these things at your disposal. You have all of these different uh, co color effects, basically like um, adjustment layers in Photoshop. Um, you've got different uh, display effects if you want to convert um, to different uh, tone mapping like a Aces or AGX. You can adjust, uh, use um, crypto mats or um, different layer blending modes. You can use, you can have, add post processing effects. You can add in, you can change light mixing. You could add in any render AOV. You can add any colors in. You can even uh, bring in image files. And then you can also pre comp with these layer groups. So there's a lot you can do with this. And the fact that it's all real time is 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 pretty astounding. Um, and I mean real time. I mean really, what I mean is progressive. It all happens progressively. And I can just go in here and start uh, changing the camera on my bug here, and it's all just happening progressively. So. So really cool stuff, and you know the downside is you know this obviously, like I really think like these sort of outputs you know they're just much better here in Moto <laughs> where we just see them at the top of the shader tree, and like I said having like a another tab here like a composite tree where we can um, put together essentially here we just have two of them, but our composites so you know a composite tree would allow you know, any of these layers, light mixing and things like that. I, I, I think, you know, you'd have to do some, um, you'd have to be some thought put into it. I, I, I'm not sure it's entirely, po entirely sure it's possible, but I, I think it probably is if you really put some thought into it. I just think it would just open up a whole bunch of possibilities to um, artists who would rather work in a layered sort of approach in the shader tree and composite in a layered Photoshop-y, After effects -y sort of way than dealing with nodes. And that's nothing against nodes. Nodes are obviously very powerful and, you know, high-end systems are essentially all nodal based, whether it's Houdini or Nuke. Uh, but most users don't use that. And I think especially new users and users um, who may be professionals but are coming from the design, Photoshop, Illustrator um, part of the industry would be more inclined to work on 3D if you had a layer-based approach. And this is where Moto and um, Moto being able to unlock Octane's power in a, in a shader tree or maybe even a composite tree is something that I'd, I'd really like to see happen. I think it give, it's one of the few aspects of Moto that's truly unique. Um, and I think it needs to be leveraged if they want to separate themselves out from the rest of the industry. Yum, yum.